In this video, I'm going to show you how to enable DLP for your Copilots in Copilot Studio. So the first question you might be asking yourself is, what is DLP? Well, it stands for Data Loss Prevention, and what we're looking at being able to do here is there is an ability within the Power Platform to define data loss prevention policies and be able to enforce them onto different environments. So Copilot Studio out of the box doesn't have enforcement turned on. You have to go as a administrator and enable it. And you also have to configure a few different things as part of it. So in this video, we'll be going into those details. Now, what you can do with DLP policies, there will be additional videos that I will build on this channel in the coming uh, days or weeks that you can go and look at. So the first thing that I want you to make sure that you have configured, and if you haven't got this configured or you don't know how to configure it, I'll put a link to the video uh, that shows you how to do this that I just cut uh, like last week. But the thing that you need to be able to do first of all is have Visual Studio Code set up with the power tools for the power platform so that we will be able to get a PowerShell command against our particular instance, our, our environment that we have inside of Copilot Studio. And in order to do that, you'll end up with, as you can see here, we'll have like our auth set up and you'll have your environment and all of this. So if you haven't done this, please don't continue in this video. Go make sure that you go watch the other one first and follow those instructions. And then we'll be able to start moving forward in this video. The next thing I want to call out is there are instructions that I'll be using to show you how to do this today. But the thing is, is that you can go to the Learn website and there is a, uh, a thing under the Copilot Studio documentation that's about configured data loss prevention for Copilots. I'll put a link on the screen here so that you can see that. But just be aware that these are the instructions that we'll be going through today. Know that there's a lot of different things that you're going to be able to configure in here. You'll, you'll see different kind of policies and things of this nature. But just know that there's also the fact that you can configure things like what the error message is and things of that nature. So we'll walk through that part in this particular video. The configuring of the DLP uh, itself and applying policies and things of that nature, I will cover in a, an additional video, but just be aware that this is what we will be covering. Okay, so I'm going to start back at the documentation here really quick just to show you that you have to come into the documentation and there's some pieces that you may not uh, be aware of, which is you need to be able to turn on this DLP policy capability within Copilot Studio. But out of the box, it doesn't do it by default, but there's some instructions here. And if you don't catch this, this will be a bit of a problem for you, which is you need to have where you're going to be able to run these commands, which in order to be able to do that, you're going to have to install these modules to be able to do it. Now, if you click this link and you go on down and you look at the different modules, I would tell you just to save you time, just scroll all the way down to here and this is what you're looking for. So you'll copy this uh, so that you can prepare for your PowerShell uh, commands. Now, I am going to warn that there are certain situations where you won't be able to get these things installed and I'll kind of explain where it may not install properly or something of that nature because that did happen to me. So I'm going to show you that inside of Visual Studio Code. So now we're in Visual Studio Code. You'll see here that I had to install the modules and this is me just copy and pasting it in and installing the modules. You'll get asked to be able to trust or you're going to install these. Um, in the case of this, I would recommend just go ahead and say A on, on these like you see me doing here. This will make it go through the installation process for the modules that you'll need. But you'll notice that right after I installed this, I went in to run the command and I actually tried to run the command a couple of times and you'll notice here that I got this issue where it's saying uh, that I couldn't run this because of an execution policy on my machine. Now, keep in mind, first things first, make sure that you go and run 
as an administrator of Visual, Cudi Visual Studio Code. If you don't know how to do that, just when you launch the application, right click on it and say run as administrator. That will solve your problem if you can't get the installs to work. But once you get past the install and we get into this where we're trying to run one of the commands and we can't actually execute these commands because of this, what you'll see is that you can run a command here, which is get execution policy. If you run this and you get the command that says restricted, then that means that it's blocking you from being able to actually execute these commands. So my recommendation is that what you would do is you can say, you know, you can also do a list and you can see whether or not this is being pushed by a, a policy from your organization, things of that nature. But let's just say that we wanted to go, uh, go ahead and, and run a different way to be able to make this, uh, make this work. So the way that you can do that is there is a way to set, uh, what you want this to be, what your execution policy is. And so if you run the following command here, which is, um, what you're going to be able to do with this is you can go in and pass in additional information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring over something here just so that you can take a look at this. So let's look at the execution policies command really quick just before I run this command. If you notice here, you've got like long description, short description, but this is what you're looking at here. So this is the level that we wanna to set to, is we wanna set it to all signed so that that way you can run and execute commands. And if it's not trusted, then what it'll do is it'll ask you. But we also need to be able to understand you can set the different scopes. And so if you wanna add a scope, you can. But notice that you can just say, get execution policy. Here's the one for the list that will give you this output so you can figure it out. And then just know that what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna have the uh, set execution policy and then we'll do execution policy. And then we're gonna set the value. So in this case, again, all we're going to do is do this set execution policy with execution policy being set and we're going to set it to all signed so i'm going to go back really quick so now that i'm back over and we have our set execution policy we'll just put dash execution with a capital p policy i move my mouse so you can see and then we'll do a space and we'll say that what we want is we want the all signed option. So, or, and to do that, you just type all signed. And again, capital A, capital S, and then you can hit enter. And you'll see here that it will ask you a question. In this case, I'm just gonna hit A for all. And now we're good to go. And at this point, what's gonna happen is if we jump back to our other instructions that we had before, so now that we're, we're back in our other instructions, you'll see now you can actually run these different commands. So I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna to go to get Power Virtual Agents Enforcement. Now, notice that we're gonna need our tenant ID. And our tenant ID is actually not so easy to find. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to find your tenant ID. So in the case of this, what we'll need to do, so what we'll need to do is go into the web browser where we're authenticated for our Copilot Studio, and you will just open a new tab, and we'll go to the portal.azure.com because this is actually something that we need to pull from our Entra ID and our act, or otherwise known as Azure Active Directory. And if you go in and you click on the Entra ID, you'll see that you're in this particular tenant and here is your tenant ID right here. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and copy this so that we can prepare to run our command uh, that we're looking for. And then let's just switch back over to our other web browser just to make sure that we see what it is that we're going to run. Now, if you want, I, 
I would recommend that you go ahead and open a text file uh, for inside of like Notepad or something like that and go ahead and paste your uh, tenant ID for you to be able to use for all the commands that we're going to be doing today because we've got quite a few that we're going to want to run. And in this case, because I've already copied that off, you can also uh, come in and just hit copy here and that will get you the PowerShell command that we're looking for. Now I'm going to just shift, do like a shift tab back over. So here we are inside of Visual Studio Code and when if I just paste this in, you're gonna see that I have the tenant ID so you can clear the tenant ID out. Then we can go back and copy and paste this out of our notepad file that we have create, created for this. And now we have a command. And now when we run this command, what's gonna happen is if you haven't already authenticated, it's gonna open up a, a place for you to authenticate to your Azure Active Directory or Entra ID environment. In this case, I've already done this for this session and you can see that the command actually executed and it came back. Now, needless to say, I don't have any type of uh, policy set on my environment, I haven't done anything to it as of yet. So that should be the first step to make sure this is all working. I'm gonna switch back over to the instructions again really quick. And when we look at the instructions, there's a couple of things we wanna think about as part of what we're doing here, because there's options for us on how we're gonna turn this on. So one of the things you'll see is that there's this soft enabled mode. And the soft enabled mode is going to be where you can set that DLP policy or set DLP policies and enforce them but not actually enforce them. It's more of a reporting function so that that way you can see what would the impact be if you were to actually apply this. Now, I'm not gonna go into the details of that in this video, but know that if you do this mode uh, soft enabled, you're going to get that particular um, configuration. So what we wanna do is go ahead and turn on the ability to do this and Notice that we can enable the DLP enforcement policy for the copilots. We can do that and we, and we will do that. But I do also want to show you that you can also exempt a bot uh, from DLP policies running this command here as well. Again, we're not going to go through that particular exception in this video. We're just going to go and get this turned on. Okay. So with this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this command and I'm gonna go ahead and copy this particular one and then we'll paste it in and to uh, Visual Studio. Okay, now that we're back in Visual Studio, I'm just gonna paste this in and notice that there's a couple of different options that we have here. So the first thing is, is that the tenant ID. So we wanna go ahead and make the change to the tenant ID here and I'm just gonna highlight this out. And remember, this is why I said it's a good idea to copy and paste this or to create a text file where you have this information. So I'm just gonna put in, uh, put it in here. And then let's look at the mode. The mode as enabled will actually set this so that it's on so that it will actually enforce a DLP policy. Now, if you want to do this only on newly created ones, you can come in here and set this where you can say that you want it only on new ones past a certain date. Now, for me and the demos that I'm going to be doing, I just want it to be enforced on everything that, that is inside of here. So I'm going to go ahead and say that I want to just set this as enabled. So. We'll run our command. And now we have our, uh, our policies being enabled. So now DLP is on across the board. So whatever policies I'm gonna set, set are going to be on everything that I run into at this point. So with this, just to show you, we can go, you can do like an up on your keyboard and a couple of times you can go back and you can do the get and you'll now see that it's enabled. So this is what it takes to be able to just turn on DLP within the environment for you. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you would like, you can try Copilot Studio at aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio 
And feel free to like and subscribe to my channel for more educational and how-to videos on Copilot Studio. And get out there and make sure that you're making some really great secure Copilots.